Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is good, y'all. Hallelujah. God is good. Sometimes we just don't know what God is doing. But he just has an ear that I'm here and let him do what thus God tells him to do. To God be the glory. It's just an honor and a privilege to be before you today. Because this day is not granted for everybody. We have to give him the honor and the glory. Because we did not have to be in the position that we are in now. Some people wish they would be here. Some people wish people were still here. But everybody is not who we are. So we got to accomplish whatever God would have us to accomplish this day. Not worry about tomorrow. The plans you got for tomorrow need to take care of tomorrow. But you need to be concerned about this day. God, what do you want me to do this day? How would you have me to move this day? Yeah. I heard Pastor Katrina when she was in there and I was back there. And I knew the Holy yeah. Ghost was truly moved. Yeah. And when she called me out, it was noise. I already, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah. When the Spirit is in a place, you need to start listening. Yeah. Amen. When you know the Holy Ghost is moving in a place, you need to start listening. Amen. You know what the, the person at the mic is saying, but you need to start listening. Yes. Because it's something he's going to tell you also. Yes. In the midst of her exhorting herself what God is telling her. Yes. See, God sets things up, and we don't even realize how he's setting it up. Amen. Sometimes we just think, I'm glad I came on Sunday. I'm glad I had an opportunity to hear that word. But that word was really meaning something to you. So don't just be glad about it. Do something about it. If you hear it, receive it. If you receive it, put action into it. And apply it. Because the word today, what God told me, and, and, and I tell you, it was one of those words that I didn't really know what to do with. It. Sometimes I like to type it. Sometimes I like to write it. But today I ain't do neither. I just heard. Yes. And he just kept talking to me. Yes. He kept saying, in a moment, everything can change. Yes. It takes one moment for everything to change. Yes. So whatever mindset that you feel like you're in, it only takes one moment yes. for your whole mindset to change. Yes. say, God, I received that yes. because of the things that's going on in my life. And I understood that it only take one moment for whatever I feel to change. And he's in control of that one moment. I'm not. I'm not in control. I might feel like I'm in control. I'm not in control. Because he said this only takes one moment for me to change something in you. Healing, it only takes one moment. Your finances, it only takes one moment. What you, who you want to be saved, it only takes one moment. One moment. For everything to change. While I was in the back, I, I God showed me some scriptures, and I did kind of put it just down. But it's not nothing that you know is is going to be powerful in this message, in the sense of the statement itself. One moment for everything to change, and I'm not decreating, you know, minimizing scripture. But see, God is even more powerful than the scriptures that you read. Yeah. What he's giving you is an instrument to show you that you can't trust me. Yes. You can't believe in me. Yes. You can't have faith in me. Yes. Those are the words in the Bible. That's your encouragement. Yes. But you need to understand me. Because yes. it only takes me one moment yes. 
one second to this to, to change everything that goes on in your life. In John 15, and I, you don't have to get none of these scriptures because we'll we'll do. I, I'll find a way to get it to you. But John 15 and 5, out of the contemporary English version, it says, "I am the vine, and you are the branches." Yes. If you say join to me, if you say join to me, I will say join to you. Yes. Thank you. Then you will produce lots of fruit. Mm. But you cannot do anything without me. You can't do nothing without me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you join to me, that one moment, I can change. But you can't do nothing without me. And that scripture just hits so home because sometimes we tend to think our success is about us. Right, right. But he's telling you, you can't do nothing without me. Because I am the vine. And you are the branch. So what you think is going on is not really going on unless I tell you it's going on. All right. So don't think you all that. Because you've been successful. See, because in the main thing we talked about, when you're at your lowest. Come on, come on. See, when we're at our lowest, it's easy to recognize God. Come on, right. But when we're at our highest, yes. we tend to think that it ain't him, it's us. Yes. But he said, when you're at your lowest, yes. then I am the ever more powerful if you trust in me. Yes. Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, and I'm going to read 13 and 14. It says, remember now the creator in the days of your youth. Mm -hmm. While the evil days come not, nor the year is drawn not, when, the, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Mm -hmm. And 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Mm -hmm. Fear God and keep his commandments. Yeah. For this is the whole duty of man. Mm -hmm. The God shall bring every work into judgment with ever secret things, whether it is good or whether it is evil. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring everything subject. Mm -hmm. Everything subject comes to him. Whether it's good or it's evil. We tend to think when we're doing wrong, God don't know. Oh my, oh my. God ain't in charge. Help us, help us, help us. He letting us go down that road. Right, right. He trying to see if you're going to really trust me like you say you trust me. He trying to see if you're a believer like you say you're a believer. Come on, help us. See, because those one moments can change a whole lifestyle. Yes, yes, it can. Good or evil. Yes. Whatever way you want to perceive it. Yes. But it's one moment yes. that will change a whole lifestyle. Yes. I always talk about my testimony because it was one moment yes. that changed my whole thought process. Mm -hmm. It ain't always been the way that it looked now. Mm -hmm. But that one moment yes. changed everything for me. And I'm 46 years old. So out of 46 or 47, I, I told it, I told out for I think I don't know how 46, 47. <laughs> I had plenty of moments. Yes. But that one yes. change my whole thought process. Amen. That's what we look out of. Yeah. We always wondering when God gonna do something. Mm -hmm. When you gonna get me out of this situation? Mm -hmm. When are you going to help me with my finances? When are you going to heal my body? We always want to, that's, that's, that, we didn't ensure my body. We got to, we, we must wonder that. When we wake up in the morning, we wonder how I'm going to get to work. If I ain't got no money in my pocket for gas. I'm wondering. We are wondering people. We are wondering people. It's no day that you're going to get up, you're not going to wonder something. How am I going to get through this day? Yes. How am I going to pay this bill? Yes. How is my health going to be? Yes. Are my knees going to operate the way that they should operate? Yes. Are my feet going to be as comfortable as they should be while I'm at work? Yes. Am I going to be able to do what I, what I set out to do? Yes. We are wondering people. That's why we take the challenges. That's why we do all the things that we do. 
Because we're wanderers. We're adventurers. We're trying to find out something. But the thing that God is trying to tell us, just try to find out me. Yes. Focus on me. Because yes. in one moment, I can change everything. I'm studying Solomon right now. And with Solomon, it, it comes wisdom. Mm -hmm. And in a dream, God had asked Solomon, what do you want me to give you? What do you want me to give you? Just imagine. God woke you up this morning, and he said, what do you want me to give you, Sister Tamika? What? What is it that you want, Brother Ed? What is it? What do you want me to give you? That's a question that we will answer with the quickness, but is it going to be the right thing? Right. See, because I was asked that question when we was doing the study. And I said at this time, yes, I would say wisdom, because that's what I'm studying. But I don't know if I would say that. If it just came to me out of the blue, what do you want me to give you? What can I give you to make you all everything right for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, but Solomon asked for wisdom. Mm -hmm. wisdom. Wisdom. Give me your wisdom yeah. to decipher between good and evil yeah. so I can help the people. Jesus. Give me wisdom. Mm -hmm. See, when we sit back and we think about it now, with wisdom, everything can be accomplished. Yeah. Right, right. Because now I'm allowing you to give me all the thought process that I need to answer every question that I desire. Yes. So that means I won't be asking for a new car when I already got a car. Come on, here. Right. Mm. I won't necessarily be asking for a new home when I already got a home. Yes. I won't be asking for a new relationship because this relationship ain't going as good as I want it to go. Because you ain't giving me wisdom. When you give me wisdom, I can answer these questions. Right. Yes. Right. So that's why Solomon asked for wisdom. Amen. Out of all things, he asked for wisdom. Right. And see, when you ask the right question, right. 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 when you ask answer the, if you, when you answer it the right way, you get better results. Yes. Yes. See, because he not only got wisdom, he got riches. Yes, right. yes. God said, I honor that. You didn't ask for what you what was really in your heart. You asked for something for me to be able to do for others. You asked me for wisdom and understanding to decipher between good and evil. Yes, yes. Just imagine if we could decipher between good and evil, we wouldn't make the mistakes that we make. Amen. We wouldn't. We would We be. We be smiling every day. I was just on the side of two of my friends. They ride, you know, and I'm, I didn't even know that was them. And I pulled up and I saw, oh, that's them. Yeah. They frowned. Yeah. <laughs> like they mad at the world. So I said, don't take a smile sometime. <laughs> I was just next to y'all, but y'all need to smile sometime. Can't decipher between good and evil. Right. Can't decipher. See, sometimes we have to understand that some of our problems is really controlled. Yes, yes. See, I'm starting to decipher what I need to be putting in my mind about the fact that what am I? How do I want to feel? Right. Yes, Because right. it's a choice to be mad. Right. Yeah. Come on, come on. It's a choice yeah. to be sad. That's right. It's a choice yeah. to be depressed. Yeah. It's a choice. Right. Because I can find ways to lift my spirit up if I choose to. Yes, yes. I know my situation is not the best, yes. but I can choose to be happy if I yes, want to. I can choose that. Then I have to find things that are to accomplish that. And that's God. God has to be my strength in my times of trouble. Yes. I have to allow him to guide me where I see the need. We got to let God be God. But it's a choice. Because God said in 3 and 11 about Solomon, he said, God said to Solomon, indeed, I give you wise and discerning minds. No, ma no one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you in your days. So just imagine if you ask for God's wisdom instead of him giving you certain things that we all 
know that we ask for it. God bless us. Bless me in this. Bless me in that. Help, us. Help me through this. Help, Help me through that. And all along, he just waiting on you. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He just waiting on you. Right. To make the decision. To ask the right, answer the question the right way. Yes. I'm asking you. He asks us daily. Yes. What do you want? That's why we wake up with that thought. What do you want? Yes, God. What do you want, Elder Cody? Yes. What do you want? What do you want? That's how he approaches us every day that he gives us life. He's asking us, what do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want? Mm -hmm. In Luke, the prodigal son, and I'm just giving you these two examples, um, illustrations from the Bible, because the prodigal son was also an example. Mm -hmm. Because the prodigal son decided he was going to do what he wanted to do. Did. With this inheritance. Did. I'm going to do what I want to do with my inheritance. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to kick it. <laughs> I got all this money and I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy me something. All that right. new car I want, I'm getting it. Yeah. Hey, plan. <laughs> that new house I want, I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah, this is mine. I'm getting this. I'm going to get everything I want. Because I got my inheritance. I earned this. I did everything my daddy told me to do. This money is mine. You can't tell me nothing no more. Yeah, some of us feeling that. Because <laughs> we know we didn't spend some money that we shouldn't have spent. We got an insurance plan. We blew it. Come on here, tell the truth. We got our income tax. We blew it. Just blew it. Didn't even think about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm nice right now. Let me go on and do what I need to do. It ain't working. It ain't working. We can't do what we want to do. God, what would you have me to do with this? What seeds would you have me to plant? Because we all know about seeds, right? You plant a seed, it grows. And what it grow into? More. So when you talk about the prodigal son, he did what he wanted to do with his inheritance. But he had a moment. He had a moment. And we all didn't have that moment. He in that pig pen. <laughs> now that's a little different, ain't it, Abba Cody? It's a little different for you now. In this pig pen, now you didn't, now you're at your low. You're at your low. See, when you was at the high, you was good. I'm making all this money. I'm doing good for myself. I'm at the high right now. But all of a sudden, in a moment, I went from here to here. He didn't give me no in-between. He took me from the top to the bottom. Now I'm in this pig pen. So what I'm doing now? Oh, that moment. Oh, there is a God. All I got to do is trust in him. God, how would you lead me now? Yeah, exactly. Lead you back to your father. Yes. We got something for you. Prodigal son was a prime example of somebody that had a moment. Right. He had a moment. And when he took care of that moment, when he did what he's supposed to do with that moment, as he should have did before, then see, that's encouraging for some of us. Yeah. Because everybody ain't always did it right. 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 But all it takes is that one moment. Yeah. No matter what you did over here, it don't yeah. even matter yes, no more. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore. Amen. Yes, you ain't lived the right lifestyle. Yes, you didn't always answer the question the right way. But it don't matter anymore. As long as you recognize that one moment. Yes. That one moment. Yes. Then we talk about the three that got the gifts. Three that got the gifts. One five. Mm -hmm. One two. One one. All of them got a moment. Mm -hmm. But they were serving. Yeah. Call those three out. Mm -hmm. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm going to give you five. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you one. What you going to do with it? How you going to grow it? How you going to live now? See, we all got these gifts. What are we doing with it? Mm -hmm. See, the one buried it. Because he thought he could save it. 
I'm going to save it for the king when he comes back. I'm going to save it. The fire grew it. He found ways to grow it. See, that one moment he took it. They said, I'm going to make more out of this. The one that got two said, I'm going to make more out of this. The one that got one said, I'm going to save this. What are you doing with your gifts? What are you doing with your gifts? Are you saving it for some reason? I'm going to save it until I get my own church. I'm going to save it until the pastor call me up and say, you a minister? You a deacon? You a prophet? I'm going to save my gift. So when the pastor comes to me, he can tell me what to do with it. But God gave you the wisdom. God gave you the desire. God gave you the feelings and emotions to be able to function the way that he would have you to function. He gave it to you. I can't tell you. I can just preach the word. Because when my moment, one moment came, I recognized it. Mm -hmm. And I decided it had to be a change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't keep on living my lifestyle like this. All right now. This ain't worth the, the, the commotion. This ain't worth all the torment. This ain't worth all the secrecy. This ain't worth all the things that I, I, I don't really desire. It's not worth it. I need a change. So I took advantage of that moment. Some of us in here might be going through that moment now. God then spoke, and you just sit, wait. But that moment is here. And don't let that moment pass you by. Take advantage of the situation and the opportunity. Because it may not come back around the way that it's coming to you now. That's the moment. Recognize the moment. The two, five, the two, the one. They have to recognize the moment. In a single blink of an eye, God can change everything in your life. Yeah, From your success to your failures. Yeah. And see, that's what God really wanted me to get across to, to, to the people because sometimes we tend to think when we're successful, we got it going on. All right. Yeah. We don't need church. We don't need God. We doing this all by ourselves. But my godson is here. He play football. My son play football. They'll tell you the secret to football is to understand that all it takes is one bad hit. One concussion. One situation and football can be gone. Sports can be gone. One car accident. You could be paralyzed. Yes. Eyesight is not always guaranteed. Hearing is not always guaranteed. Amen. To be able to talk is not always guaranteed. Yes. To be able to walk is not always guaranteed. Because yes. all it takes is one moment. Yes. One situation yes. for everything to change. Yes. But see, when you're at your low, mm -hmm. when you're at your low, See, because when the prodigal son was in the pig pen, he was at his low. Right. Mm -hmm. But he didn't say, God, why you put me here? Because mm -hmm. he did something. And it's called the aha moment. Mm -hmm. The aha moment. And I'm going to make sure I bring that out the right way. The aha moment. <laughs> Amen. Because it's, it's, the, the acronym stands for something. Awakening. Honesty and action. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the aha moment. Mm -hmm. You awake, suddenly something happened. Mm -hmm. It's changed my whole life. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be honest mm -hmm. with yourself. Mm -hmm. Then you have to put action to it. Mm -hmm. See, those are three things the aha moment brings out to you. You got to suddenly awake. Yes. You got to be honest. Then you got to take action. Mm -hmm. That minute, that one second, that one moment, mm -hmm. that something happened in your life that changed everything about your life. Mm -hmm. You got to suddenly awake to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you have to be totally honest with it. Mm -hmm. Amen. And understand that God is still God. Still but then he's requiring you to put action into it. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
the aha moment. See, we all have those moments. When we go, I say, aha, you shouldn't have did that. Aha, you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. Evil and good. Mm -hmm. Success and failure. We have to understand that God is in full control. Yes, he is full control. I'm not in control. Pastor Katrina is not in control. Peace of faith is not in control. You're not in control. Mother Jefferson is not in control. God is in control. Yes. See, we're seeking some things for God to be able to answer some questions. Amen. But God is in control. God is in control. Every situation doesn't mean that that situation is you should agree. Every good thing is not good. Right. Right. But every bad thing is not bad. That's right. We say we the church that we never lose. We just win. Right. Or we learn. Yes. We have to stand by that. Yes. So when we going through the valley of the shadow of death, yes. All right. help us, help us. you shall not fear no evil. Yes. Because you just said, let God be God. Yes. So for God I live, for God I die. Right. Means that whatever it takes, God, yes. I'm going to do what thus says the Lord. Yes. If it's for you to make keep me here or take me there, yes. I got to do work. Yes. I particularly like this old song where they talk about this, this old man, and I ain't, I ain't gonna try to quote nothing. But the phrase of it is the old man is in the choir, wanna be in the choir. Mm -hmm. And he told him he can't sing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he goes to heaven. Mm -hmm. And then he says, I'm in the heavenly choir. And they heard him singing from, from, up, from up above. Ah. I love that song. You know why? Because somebody told him he couldn't do nothing. Come on, right. All right. Somebody told him you ain't going to be nothing. All right. You ain't going to never get out of this situation. Right. You know, somebody told him you're a loser. Mm -hmm. You're a deadbeat. You ain't no good. Mm -hmm. Generational curses. Just like um, Pastor Katrina was saying. <coughs> somebody told him you're going to be just like your dad. Mm -hmm. Or you just like your mom. Mm -hmm. But aha. Uh -huh. No, I'm not. <laughs> I had an aha moment. I'm not going to be a womanizer. I'm not going to be, I'm going to take care of my family. Aha. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had a moment. I had a moment. I had to suddenly away. Hey, <laughs> this ain't working out here, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, you like basketball, but this ain't working. Listen, you and back, this ain't working. Me and basketball don't go together. All right now. It's me and you. Yes. I need you. Yes. Ah, moments. All right now. Awaken. Yes. Suddenly. Be honest with yourself. Yes. You ain't all that good. That's right. This ain't all about you. Yes. Right. You didn't do this. Yes. I did this. I'll be honest with yourself. Right. Ooh, yes, God. Be honest. Mm -hmm. Then do something about it. Take action. Take action. Take action. See, sometimes the word, I, I, I said, God, I, I don't even know. Ten minutes top, five minutes top, how are we going to do this? I'm like, God, it, it only take one moment. And one moment could be a second. So sometimes the word don't have to be extended to an hour to two hours. Sometimes we ain't got to sit in church all day to get that understanding. That one moment that you face in your life right now can change if you let God be God. And that's the good and the bad. Because the good and the bad only is a, is, a, is a thought process of us. Everything he do is good. Everything that he does is good. It's nothing bad about him. So the good and the bad is the way we evaluate it. But if we let God evaluate it, it's all good. Yes, it ain't like I want it to be. But you're still good, God. Yes, I want things to be different. But you're still good, God. Yes. Yes, yes, but you're still good, God. God is our deliverer. God is our savior. God is our healer. God is all these things to us, our provider. God is everything. So I know we had 
the prayer. And everybody receives something. But to me, if you feel like God is putting you in a position right now, where he's saying, this is your moment. This is your time. I need you. I need you. I need you to be strong. I need you to be committed. I need you to be dedicated. Just come up to the altar and you lift your hands up. You pray to God yourself. Solomon answered the question himself. He didn't ask his, his, somebody, his cousin, cousin, what do you think I should say? God, what would you have me to do today? How would you have me to receive you today? How can I get to my I, I moment, Father God? So I can look at everyone and tell them what thus says the Lord. Not thus says me, what thus says the Lord. You encourage yourself. Let God be God. Let God be God. Don't let the moment pass you by. Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and to give you hope and a future. He's here to give us hope and a future. He wants us to be success as successful as we possibly can with his guidance. Yes, he went to school. Yes.